clicking these down to 15 foot pounds right now. 15 foot pounds. I've been setting these clutches up uh, with a 100% success rate uh, in the past, um, in the present, and the future. <laughs> I've been using that Willys Jeep uh, torque specs on these things, uh, 12 to 17 foot pounds on the bolts. I basically just go around the whole um, pressure plate um, and torque the bolts down with uh, red Loctite and uh, I torque them down in sequence and make sure that that uh, log washer is compressed and make sure that that bolt won't back out. Uh, I also take great care to make sure that that diaphragm springs, those little fingers, that they don't compress as well because uh, those diaphragm fingers will um, um, mess up your calculations with the throw out bearing. Uh, throw up bearing when I do this I use a throw up bearing of one inch and one fourth so one and one fourth inch throw up bearing and I go into it right now about that all right it's math time ladies and gentlemen math time so you got your engine and your transmission you're trying to find out the right size for your throw up bearing so you got your engine side and your clutch so the face of the back side of that engine and the front side of that clutch is what you need to measure transmission you get the transmission here you have the input shaft and the lands right here that's where the the throw out bearing will will, 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 um, will ride against so you're measuring from that point from the lands to the outside of that bell housing so you take that number and that number and you subtract them the difference you get plus your air gap on each side will give you your throw out bearing size so I don't have a can't find a long but I did find this straight edge so what we're going to do is i'm going to measure that just like that get that one and then i'm going to measure this one here all right so we're on the outside of this bell housing and we're measuring right to the tip of that this lands i think it's what it's called and when i'm looking down on it i got three and one eighths yeah, three and one eighths. So the transmission three one eighths. Now let's measure back of the engine. So we're measuring back here right at the face where the bell housing goes into. So we're gonna put our straight edge right up on here. Well, on this particular clutch, it has this little lip here. So we gotta subtract that little lip. But you wanna measure from these clutch fingers here. From, from here to the edge of that. Let me get set up again. Okay, first I'm gonna get my straight edge I'm gonna come in and measure how long, cause we have this lip. We gotta get rid of this lip from our equation. That's one eighth. So we got a minus the one eighth lip here. Okay. And then from there to there, we got four and a quarter. Four and a quarter is our number. So let's go over here. Four and one fourth minus the one eighth, right? So it'll be four and two eighths minus one eighth equals four and one eighth. So four and one eighth minus that number, three one eighth equals one inch.
So with that air gap, you're within spec because it's with one sixteenth to one eighth air gap on each side. So that's within spec. O'Reilly's, there's the part number, 614018. This is the cheapy one, 20 bucks. And then there's a little bit better one here, 614018, $32. So these are there, get it to you by 3 p.m. I have an original one. Let's see the number here. CB1430C green. It's a small throwout bearing, like a quarter, one and a quarter inch. And these were the old school ones that were like 10 bucks a piece back in the day. I don't know what they are now. I tried to find it, couldn't find it. So, so that's our throwout bearing. And we're going to go ahead and put one on here just to mess around. This test is just to show you that my transmission works and that that clutch works and that's the right clutch for that throwout bearing and just to show you that this is what we're working with and it worked in the path prior to 2020. Um, this is what we got. It took me about 15-20 minutes to get it in there. Uh, if you can see I was just easing it in there, easing it in there. I had two bolts that I was really working with, going back and forth, tightening them, and it just sucked it right in. And then I came in with the gun, uh, just zipped it in. Did, did, did. I didn't put any Loctite or anything on the clutch bolts uh, because he's going to come in and out, and they're only going to run for like two minutes or less. Um, so uh, final assembly, we'll put Loctite on those for right now. We're not. We're just going to run it like it is, and then uh, see what we got. So we'll put a load on it. And then we'll know for sure. Don't do this at home, kids. Okay, we got a load on it. Okay, that keeps it in there. Contact. Yeah, that's a simulated load. The car's parked. You want to take off? No clutch in. No clutch engage. It won't let me. Clutch is good. That's how we confirm. Engage the clutch port. Right in there. Now it should stall right here. I'm gonna put it in third, because it's gonna stall it. Let's engage it. Stalled it. That's a good clutch. Key off. So we just confirmed that we have a good clutch there. It goes through the gears. Um, yep, that's good. I was at 15 and it worked good with the regular T14 stock um, throwout bearing I got from O'Reilly's but uh, I tried to put in the superior bearing from Novak and it wasn't going so and what we're gonna do is crank this down to 25 foot-pounds and then remeasure and then retry all right 25 foot-pounds we're gonna bring this down 25 foot-pounds that'll bring our 
our diaphragm fingers down, hopefully 3 16ths of an inch, and we'll be able to fit that Novak bearing. That's what we're going to do right now. 25. You can see those diaphragm springs going down. Okay, one click. Yeah, they're going down pretty good. There he is. Now before, I was going by Chevy, small block or Buick, 25, and those are 25 to 35. So that one time I put, I think I put 35, I had to put 35, I compressed all of this and I got it in the car, I pressed on the clutch, there was nothing, it was rock hard because this was all gone. But I think in Little Brother, I put 25. If I can remember right, that was a long time ago. Um, and I put that Novak uh, throw out bearing in there, and man, crystal clear. Ever since, driving around everywhere we go, mess around, have a good time, and uh, uh, it's a really good bearing. But let's do 25 foot pounds, and uh, we're going to remeasure. All right, so the transmission doesn't change, so we keep that number. This one changed because our fingers got depressed a little. So we're done with our straight edge here. Measure that number. That number doesn't change. One and a quarter. We got to subtract this lip here. That's an eighth. And this measures seven eighths. Four and a quarter minus seven eighths. All right, so here's our engine side, our clutch measures four and a four and an eighth minus a quarter equals four and an eighth. Minus the seven eighth that we got from the depressed fingers of that clutch plate equals four and five eighths. Minus the trans, three and one eighth, so four and five eighths minus three and one eighths, plus our air grab, sixteenth inch and a sixteenth inch, comes to one and five eighths. One and five eighths, that's what they send you in the clutch kit. Let's put this together, see if we got it. All right, so what I'm gonna do right now, I got my Novak. I haven't put the pin in because I'm a little afraid. Um, this is one and five eight. It's the clutch bearing that, uh, that came with the kit. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use this. This is one and five eights. That's one and five eights right now. So the other issue I got is this little lip. I don't know if that's gonna cause any issues. This doesn't have it, so let's test this first. One and five eights on 25 pounds pressure with uh, 25 pounds pressure on the clutch plate. The diaphragms are sucked in, and that's the measurement we got. Let's try it out. <clears throat>
got it all set up. The clutch feels really good. We have a good air gap right there. Really good. You got 25 pounds pressure on the clutch plate. We got the one and five eighths uh, throwout bearing that came in the kit. And we're gonna test it out. Try to put it in gear. Won't let me. Clutch in. Won't let me. Mm. That's a no-go. Hmm. I bet you I know what's going on. <laughs> I've been observing, so I have this old clutch here, 4127, and it has no clutch hub right here. These are pre-COVID how they used to give them. <laughs> this one has that big hub on it. Like that. I'm guessing that quarter inch right there or three sixteenths is what's not letting it go all the way through. Let's put on this old one, see if it'll work. All right, just torque this clutch plate in. We got that, uh, that old 4187 pre-COVID clutch plate in there with no hub. And we're gonna mate it with the one and five eighths bearing that came in the kit. We just changed out our clutch plate, um, clutch disc. I'm guessing that we didn't get full engagement right here. You can see all the wear in there. So we had, we went ahead and switched it out with 4187, which is pre-COVID with the flat hub. <clears throat> Torqued down the clutch, uh, clutch plate down to 25 foot pounds. And I got a one and five eighths throw out bearing in there that came with the kit. So let's see what we got. Contact. The engine's cold. We have good. You can see in there. I have good air gap. Try to put in gear. We have our wrench down in there in place, simulated load. Nothing. Hmm. Yeah. Let's clearance this. 
We've got a couple of them anyway, a couple spares. Let's make it like the original. So we got a couple spares, so we're gonna go ahead and clearance this right now, see what happens with my, I don't have a lathe or anything like that, so they don't call me Hacksaw Jackson for nothing. Yow! <laughs> that uh, generic throw out bearing here 158 that comes with a clutch kit we got uh, our clutch disc that we grinded down the top to less than 3 16 these 11 64 I think and we inserted it clutch plate is um, torqued down to 25 foot-pounds let's see if she works Remember earlier it wouldn't work, but the only change we did was grind down the front hub down to a little bit less than 3 16 We have, oh it feels good, oh running right in there, oh man we got a clutch. Yep, we have a clutch, excelente, so our problem I thought it was the throw out bearing. What we measured is correct because that just worked. Um, so the problem is the clutch disc. And that's how we correct it. We got to grind down the hub. Man. Well, I hope this helps us. Nothing but problems over here with these guys. Hard to configure, hard to figure it out. Man, especially if this is in the car going back and forth, back and forth. Holy smolies. But yeah, having fun. We're doing some learning over here, doing some learning. So I figured some stuff out. Figured out why these bearings weren't working. I got it to work. First of all, these are not the same height. You can see there's a little lip there. Not the same height. So the back of this on these new discs are 7 30 seconds. I mean, you can see that. A little bit less than a quarter of an inch. So 7 30 seconds. And the old disc have this flat hub measures 11 64s, which is a little bit less than 3 16 So what I did is I grinded this down to 11 64s. And then I put one of these in there, because I have a couple of them, you know. And kapow! It works. So we figured it out. Our combination that works. So I'm going to take that 158 bearing out, that works, it's good, and I'm going to put this one in there. Yeah, Novak. Uh, the other thing I observed right now is the, the look. See the look? I don't want to use it because it's really hard. And I wanted to see how it matched up on this disc. See that? Uh, I wonder... So, so let's measure this thing. Got a straight edge coming straight across. Measures like quarter inch. 1564 quarter inch. So 
This is very much taller. You can see that. Um, I'd be throwing my whole thing off huh, if I would use that. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so let's change this out. We'll keep with our same recipe. All right, so we got that in there. Let's put it together. We got that one five eighths bearing out. We got that threaded end uh, Novak bearing in. Okay. Try putting gear. No clutch. Don't want to go. Clutch. Aha. Don't want to go. Man, that one hurt. Okay. So I did need to buzz that end off. All right, so looky there. I just hacked off the outside edge right there. Took out my cutting wheel, shaved it off, and then took the flapper disc, made it smooth, hit some, some carb cleaner. I don't think I got any chips in there. I hope. But now, should be good to go. All right, we're at 25 foot pounds. Let's connect this, see if it works. set up we're at 25 foot pounds on that clutch disc on that pressure plate I mean and first thing that I notice that makes me happy is it has a really 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 good air gap beautiful and it feels like how it's supposed to just barely a little click 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 without the clicking sound, just nice and smooth. Feels good. Let's see how it goes. Let's see if they let it go up here. Nope. One going gear. Yep, fourth gear. Oh man, that's beautiful. 25 foot pounds, we have dialed it in. Outstanding. <laughs> that is awesome. We got that superior Novak. Throw up bearing in there, feels really good. I got good air gap on both sides. Clutch is feeling really nice right there. Yeah, buddy. This is exactly why I did this, because I wanted to figure that out, because I keep going back and forth, 20 pounds, 25. That one time I went 35 and I, I didn't have a clutch at all. And then now they make stuff differently now than before COVID. Now it has a, a lip on it. It didn't have that lip before. I don't know, things are just made differently now. But uh, I wanted to figure this out because it has been bugging me. And this is probably what happened to Slumdog and why I have to come back and change it up. So in order to change that one correctly, we did this one up. So let me take this apart. I am very happy. It's the end of the day. 
got that done and we got this thing dialed in let me take this apart and we'll summarize situation and the situation give you another look here before I take it apart works excellent because it's not hitting this no more and we shave that down we shave that down so it's working good now but we got this stuff dialed in so yeah I figured it out 20 25 pounds foot pressure on um, pound pressure on the plate uh, your disc you need to grind down the front in order for the 1 and 5 8 bearing to work or your Novak to work and if you do do Novak 1 and 5 8 and clearance out the outer edge right there yeah that's pretty much it I'm worn out <laughs> about 50 million freaking transmission changes in here but I let uh, the picker do all the work. I was just guiding it in, do the little Benny Hill, and goes right in, comes right back out. Um, as long as you got the angles correct, I had the jack under one side, I had the picker on the other side, and I just kind of let the machines do all the work. Of course, inside the vehicle is a whole other story, but out here, um, it went pretty good. But yeah. Outstanding. We got her done. Figured it out. Sorry this video is all over the place, but uh, you know, I had to figure things out. I was going back and forth. What's this? What's that? Doing all this Rodney Dangerfield stuff going on. So yeah, you know, we're on our own. You were on your own! <laughs> so had to figure it out. Got it all done. Had the machines working for me. And we got it done. Thanks for watching.